Jeremiah chapter 16. The word of the Lord came also unto me, Jeremiah, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife. Now, 1 Timothy 4 3. 1 Timothy 4 3. We'll read in verse 1. 1 Timothy 4 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. And that has been our theme of Jeremiah. Not only history of Jeremiah and Judah, but the church. Giving heed to seducing spirits. That's Jeremiah. That's the church. Doctrine of devils. Jeremiah, we'll see that in a moment. And that's the church. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Jeremiah and the church. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. We'll see that in a moment. I mean, Judah, they got to say, God, well, why are you doing this to us? That'd be the, that's the same attitude of the church. <clears throat> Forbidding to marry. That's the Catholic Church. Their priests and their nuns are forbidden to marry. Paul says that's the sign of the latter days. Well, the Catholic Church has been doing that many, 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 many years. <laughs> latter times. And then they go to, you know, we're getting earthquakes and all that. You know, this is signs of times. Be careful about dating. Commanding to stain from meats. That's religions. Vegin, veggies. Putting you back under the law. You can't eat this meat. Which God has created to receive with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. I can sit down and if I can thank the Lord for pork, I can eat pork. But here is that spot that Paul speaks about and we run back to to Jeremiah 16, God tells Jeremiah, Thou shalt not have a wife. Because the illustration that God is going to give him is the events that's coming to Judah. It's like Jesus said in the last days of the tribulation period Woe to the women that are with child or give suck. It's going to be so horrible that. A mother that has a baby on her breast or a woman is about to give birth you realize how I don't know what the word is but when it comes to the mark of the beast for your child you know what a mother's love is really gonna You're going to want to prone for a child. When that child is sick and you take her to the emergency room, hey, you know, we'll give you care, but we don't want the insurance card. We want the mark. And for a Jewish woman, so this is not a religious thing. This is Jeremiah set up to be an illustration to the people. And I said before that God puts his prophets Sometimes in weird circumstances. Jose is told to go out and get a whore and marry her. Three quarters of your Baptist churches would have failed, would have dropped dead, and would have told God, goodbye. And they probably wouldn't even study the book of Hosea. Neither shalt thou have son or daughters in this place. For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born. All right, this is why I told you this, Jeremiah. That are born in this place. And concerning their mothers that bear them. And concerning the fathers that beget them in this land. Land of Palestine, which is called properly the land of Israel. They say land of Palestine, but properly it's the land of Israel. The PLO and the Hamas don't belong there. And you're going to say, God bless America, we're going to have a revival in America. And America is not saying, get out of there. Give it back to Israel. America is saying, oh, Israel, give it up. 
That's a curse. That's a curse. They shall die grievous deaths. Not just death, they're grievous. They shall not be lamented. We've got a whole book coming up, Lamentation. Lament, it's, it's sadness. It's misery. Neither shall they be buried. Now that is taboo for the Jew. If a Jewish person does not get a proper burial, But they shall be as dung on the face of the earth. A pile of crap. How wicked is that? Jezebel became dog crap. Plain simple sense. That woman was eaten by dogs and she became dog poop. And no one picked her up. Their dead bodies will be just like crap on the ground. Unclean. And the law said they weren't to be unclean. They shall be consumed by the sword. War. By famine. No food. No water. Actually Babylon is going to surround the city and cut off the food. <coughs> you know America's losing her food? America's about due for a war. And God won't be blessing. We didn't do too well with Afghanistan. We didn't do too well with Vietnam and Korea. We still got some Galatians 6 7 to reap what we did to the Native Americans. We got a group of people today who this is not their country, they were brought over here for labor. And they seem to be taking over. And their carcasses, their dead bodies shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven. Now the fowls of the heaven, the, the, uh, the vultures, the scavenger animals, those birds are the unclean birds you find in the law. And for the beasts of the earth, again, that's unclean animals. You don't see an ox or a goat eating flesh. You would find the dogs, you would find pigs, you would find wild beasts. Thus their dead bodies have become unclean. The land's been unclean by the dead body. For thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning. Today we would call that a funeral home. Neither go to lament, lamentation, sorrow, nor be known them. For I have given, I have taken away my peace from the this people, saith the Lord. And, and we're seeing the prophet, peace, there is peace, there's no war, there's no famine, there's peace. God says, I've taken away my peace. I've taken away my peace. You know what? They may have a little peace in alcohol. They may have a little peace in whatever kind of things they do. But that's only temporary peace. Until the money's gone. Even loving kindness. Look at God is love. God said, I'll take away my peace. And I'll take away my loving kindness. You're not going to say God is love. God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. What do you do when God takes that loving kindness away? And mercy. Not just mercy, mercy. I'm, I'm, I'm removing it. I'm taking away the peace. I'm taking love, the loving kindness. I'm taking away the mercy. God's already told Jeremiah, don't you even pray for him. Judah is about to go into a... Uh, a circumstances in the absence of God that no one would want to be 
where you get yourself in a circumstance that God tells the Christians, I don't want to hear your prayers for that person. I don't want to hear your prayers for that group of people. I'm done. Somebody is in trouble. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. There's no due regard. There's no prejudice. They shall not be buried. Again, that's twice. Me shall they lament. Again, twice. Verily, verily. It's important for them. Nor cut themselves. There's your tattoo. There's cutting of the plants. There is your penance. And one of the death things they were doing, they were cutting themselves. And making themselves bleed. You can't see that anywhere for God to tell a man to do that, but that, that's religion. It's called penance in the Catholic Church. Nor make themselves bald for them. They're removing their hair. They're cutting their hair. And that is the main thing of Christians and, 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 and people. They're, they're making themselves bald today. They're cutting their hair extra short. That cutting of the flesh and that baldness shows up in your tattoo. A skull. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in the morning. They're just ripping their flesh. They're devil possessed. I believe that's what one of the devils was doing when Jesus, the maniac of Gadara. That's a devil possession. Tearing and ripping your flesh apart. And that's what they're doing with all these body piercings. You know, it, it makes me sick. You, you got beautiful women out there, and I can look now because I'm a widow, but I am looking for them. You got these beautiful women, and they have marred their bodies with tattoos. That's disgusting. You know? And, and see them with all over their bodies and placed upon their body. I probably wouldn't even want to know where there's tattoos. And then body piercings everywhere and everywhere and everywhere. And in places where I probably don't want to know. To comfort them for the dead. That's a comfort in the dead. Mule, mule, eh, I can't say it. Mutilation. That's a comfort. You're devil possessed. That maniac Gadur is cutting himself, ripping himself, and he's crying day and night. That's a sign of you have got an unclean spirit. I hope that's not in the Christians, but it could be. Just because you're a Christian, saved, born again, going doesn't mean you can't be devil. You can go so far from God and so much in love with the devil that you do the devil thing. I'm reminded one singer. She sang in a Baptist church. She sang for the Lord. She gave herself to the world. And sang for the world and sang for the devil. And she ended up dead with drugs in her bathtub. I don't know. That's just what, I, what I've heard. The headlines I read. I read the headlines. That's it. To comfort for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation. 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 Is... Comfort, distress of mind. If you see the definition I got in the Webster's 1828 dictionary, 
It supports and strengthens the mind of hope, joy, courage, and the like. There is going to be such misery coming by God because the sins of the people. Cup of consolation would be, think about today would be the doctor giving you a pill. Giving you medication and it's not going to work. The bartender giving you the hard liquor and it doesn't help. The man on the street gives you the, the little bag of drugs. And it don't help. Because there's going to be death everywhere. Now this is not going to be the church age, but this can be America in the world today. And then we got the world I don't have. Seven years of the Antichrist. And they're going to be Jews who are going to be beheaded for the word of God. To drink for their father and for their mother. Their parents. Their parents have been killed. And <clears throat> drugs, alcohol, sex, and booze. And whatever you do is not going to relieve you. We've got a world today strung out, including Christians, in medications and drugs. You've got the Christians today, oh, we got COVID-19. Instead of turning to God, turn to the shot. Have you got your shot for COVID-19? No, I pray to God and put my trust in God. Now, I've even heard pastors, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with the shot. And, you know, it, 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 shot. How about just praying? How about just putting your trust in God? About, huh? Thou shalt not also go in the house of feasting. Funeral's over, and after the funeral, you, you, they have you know, we, you know, table with food. Everybody gets together, and you talk about to sit with them to eat and drink. There's going to be, in, in a sense, today to bring it to. There's going to be no funeral service, no memorial service. They're going to be on the run. There's going to be famine. There's going to be other issues on your mind. It's going to blow your mind away. For thus saith the Lord. Look how much God says, 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 says. The God of Israel. Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place. In your eyes. And in your days, Jeremiah. The voice of mirth. Happiness. The voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. There's going to be funerals, but not even funerals. There's going to be death, but no memorial services. And there's going to be no, going to be no marriages. Jeremiah, don't you marry anybody, Jeremiah, because there will be no marriages. Marriages promises more family and more children. With every marriage, the parents of the bride and the groom would be hopeful, I'm going to get grandchildren. The marriages have been stopped. Or will stop. And the hope of children to come have ended. And the parents and the two age people that would think about getting married are going to be killed, are going to die by the famine, by the sword, and their bodies will be left on the ground. And not only that with the animals, but think about what, what it would be the smell. Think about what would be the picture of bodies decaying.
And it shall come to pass, interesting verse 10, that paragraph mark, it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words. Notice how God says show the words. And it's remarkable that for Christians, they shall say unto thee, this is going to be right, tell them that Easter is wrong, tell them that Christmas is wrong. Encourage them to witness, encourage them, instead of just inviting them to church, but going out and telling them about Jesus yourself. Encourage them to read their Bible. Encourage them in Fox's Book of Mormon. Encourage them in Pilgrim's Progress. Encourage them to grow. Tell them that there's wood, hay, and stubble coming if they don't do right. Wherefore has the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? You mean after 15 chapters? You don't know? Why don't they know? Have we not read in 15 chapters what has been going on? Have we not read in 66 books of Isaiah what is going on? What's the problem? Wherefore has the Lord pronounced his great evil? They're not listening. And the churches today, I'm talking about the Baptist churches, they're not listening. Well, we want the children to get to see Jesus and know Jesus from the Bible, and we got to have fun and games with VBS. Well, I hate to say it, but that's not what Jesus would do. That's not what Peter would do. That's not what Paul would do. All right, they say, and I don't know. But they say that Jesus was a carpenter. And I don't know. I don't think so. But. Nothing said. Okay. All right. If Jesus was a carpenter, and if Jesus wanted people to make wooden crafts and all that, you would think that would show up in the Bible? Suffer the little children to come on to me so we can make little birdhouses for, for the Heavenly Father. And we can paint little scriptures on the birdhouses. That's not in the Bible. Preach the word, Paul said. Be instant in season, out of season, out of season. Not gathering around so they can have biscuits and triscuits and, and, and juice. and. Okay, you get to go play on the slide and you get to go play on the swing set. And you get to seesaw. Okay, Bible time. We got three minutes Bible time. And we got to hurry up and have our snacks before mom and dad come and pick you guys up. Don't tell me I've been in two VBSs. And I quit the third VBS when it was coming to be, we were going to have clowns, and one of the clowns was going to be an upside-down clown. No, not, I'm not doing this nonsense. <laughs> That's carnal. And then, oh, what do you mean it's carnal? Where do you find clowns? <laughs> carnival. What is carnal? Carnival. Well, that's the thing. They have not been listening. Wherefore has the Lord pronounced all this great evil against? They think they're doing right. God, why would God give me wood, hay, or stubble? Look, look at Revelation chapter 3. They think they're doing well. Look at Revelation chapter 3. And... Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. <clears throat> this is the church, because thou sayest, the church, I am rich. Increase with goods. Look at all the buses, look at all the vans. Look at the Sunday school attendance. Look at all the heads we counted. And have need of nothing. So back to Jeremiah. 16. So with all that, we are rich. We have need of nothing. So why would the Lord pronounce this great? Why would the Lord give us wood, hay, or stubble? Because you're not doing right. 
Do you see how good we are? Do you see how famous we are? Do you see how much everybody loves us? Do you see how many heads are here? Do you see how many buses are running? Do you see how many people walk the altars? Do you see how many people have said a prayer? Do you see how many people are at the chicken fellowship? Do you see how many people came to the belly dancer for Jesus last week? How about all the people who went to our fishing trip? How about all the senior saints that went to the museum two weeks ago? Haven't you seen all that? And how much of the gospel got out? How much conviction has been in your pew? Just because they walk the aisles doesn't mean there's conviction. And that the people in Jeremiah's time and the people in the church age, like, I don't know how you can say God's going to do that. because Why? And that the fact that people in Judah and the people in the church age believe that what they're doing pleases God. I met a guy one time, I forget, I forget which church it was. I forget the guy. I just remember the guy. This guy had the notion in his brain, I don't know where he got it from, that the idea he was there Sunday morning, it pleased God in all heaven. And what was it? What was it he said? I, I, let me try it. God is pleased that I'm here today. Something like that. Like you mean of all the church ages, all the church services that happens on this Sunday morning, both past, present, and yet future, because the time frame hasn't stopped, God was pleased just because you showed up today. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Or what is our iniquity? <laughs> What's our sin? You know, the people in Jeremiah's time, all right, maybe they missed Jeremiah preaching. Maybe they were in Bethlehem. Maybe they're going up to Dan. Maybe they went to a family trip down Beersheba. But you ever think that one of the times, or the three of the times that Jeremiah has been called by God to preach, is maybe the three times that the men were supposed to be there in Jerusalem? And that the fact is, all right, in Jeremiah's time to be, okay, maybe you didn't hear Jeremiah. Maybe you didn't hear Isaiah. Maybe through the grapevine you didn't hear about Jeremiah preaching at the temple that mean that's the idiot. How about the Christian today has got all 66 books of the Bible? How about the Christian that doesn't have the King James Bible, they got something else? How about the Christian that doesn't have a Bible at all? How about the Christian that show up to church and don't even bring a Bible? How about the Christian that show up to church, doesn't bring a Bible, and doesn't open the pew Bible? How about the Christian, I'm King James, they carry a King James Bible, but they don't open it. And they don't read it. And then when somebody comes along and preaches the Bible, teaches the Bible, what is our iniquity? When I go in there and teach on Facebook and teach the doctrines and Christians come up to me, well, how can that be wrong? I just gave you 45 minutes. I gave you anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour, maybe part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. And you're going to ask me what the iniquity is? Well, I only heard one minute. Bible says the study to show thyself approved unto God and working that he is not to be a chain, rightly dividing. Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Now imagine a Christian in the church age who rich, wonderful, how great we have no need of nothing. What do you mean there may not be nobody saved from our church? They're coming up forward. Now, we can't make salvation too simple, and we can't make salvation too hard. 
Salvation is simple. But if there's not a heart belief in what Jesus Christ done to gospel, you can say all the prayers you want. There is no salvation. And you got a bunch of people who may say a prayer and end up in hell. They said a prayer. <laughs> Look, they're in our journal. They, they're one of six people that walked the altar that day. <laughs> then thou shalt say to them. You see what, ver what chapter and verse that is? Take a look. Well, what chapter and verse? 1611. Then thou shalt say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods. And Paul said about the Christian, I am of Paul. Where of Silas? Where of Thessalonica? And Paul, in the modern English, <laughs> what about Jesus? We have walked after other gods. You ready for other gods? Heroes, Esther, Tammuz, dead lost men. Dead lost women that you did not even witness to. Preachers, preacherettes, churches, and have served them. Oh, well, we're deacon. We mow the lawn. We come and we wipe down the church to make sure COVID-19 is not in our church. We serve the chicken or the or the, the, the corn at the fellowship. I've been in many churches. Where there's been a fellowship and they're not even in the service. They're too busy in the fellowship hall getting the meals ready. And have worshipped them. So serving and worship are two different words. You can clean the church. You can do things for your pastor. And that church and that pastor is your God. Because you're not doing it for the Lord. You're doing it for Him. And you're doing it for the church. And then worshiping. I had a man one time. If anybody says anything against my pastor, I'll shoot him. Don't you ever speak ill of my pastor. Oh, okay. I know who your God is. And have forsaken me. They serve the gods. They worship the gods. And they have forsaken God. And have not kept my law. That's Old Testament. But you know what they think? Why is this happening to us? Didn't we have the Queen of Heaven a few chapters ago? The fathers were getting the wood, or the children were getting the wood, the fathers were killing the, 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 the fire, and the women were making the cakes to the queen of heaven. Everything's hunky great. Why would God be mad at us? They don't even realize the queen of heaven is wrong. Well, our church taught us. What saith the Lord? What saith the scripture? What saith Jeremiah? And they're still, to this point, they're still where we are, worshiping the Queen of Heaven. And there are churches still worshiping Eros. They're still worshiping Esther. They're still worshiping Tamu. They're still about their ways. We're going to do what we're going to do, beside what the Bible says. And why would God be angry with us?
And ye have done worse than your fathers. For behold, ye walk everyone after imagination of his evil heart. Not only do you got the false god, false worship. Hey, I got an idea. I got an idea. Let's bring it up today. I got an idea. All are welcome. You guys, do you know why they arrested Paul when he came back to Jerusalem? They accused, though it didn't happen, but they accused Paul for bringing Gentiles in the temple. That's, that was his charge. He did it. And the church today, well, we'll just bring the world in. Hey, we'll bring the drums in. We'll bring the lights in. We'll bring in the contemporary music. We'll just let the world have a good time. Who thought of that? And then who's the idea to think God is pleased with this? I mean, can anybody really, really think that God is pleased with Joe Olstein? But how many people think that man with the yacht, with the airplane, with the mansion, how many people think that that man is a holy man of God? And has bought every single one of his books and read his books more faithful than they read the Bible. How many people can study the Bible and listen to Joyce Myers when the Bible says she's not even to be teaching and usurping the authority? And how many people have listened to her faithfully and they can't, they tape her and they get her books and they get her stuff faithfully thinking they're doing right? Who would think of that? Who would even think to listen to a person running to the law to teach you about tithing in the church where, oh, you know, Paul, this book of the Bible is completely against those bringing the law into the church. Paul really, you know, he blasted. You're not to have the, no, we're not under law. We're under grace. All right, today we're going to talk about tithing. You want to open your Bibles to Malachi. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo, woo-hoo. Am I the only one in this church to say, Something's wrong here. <laughs> they may not hearken on to me. There are Christians in Baptist churches. I don't care about the Catholic. I don't care about the president. Talk about the Baptist churches, Bible churches. They, they're not listening to God. They're going to do it by that song. I forget who sang it. I'm going to do it my way. Never mind that Jesus says, I am the way. And they're in trouble. And when God sends them men to help and teach them out and, and try to get them right, they're not going to listen. They'll sit behind their desk and say, well, what gives you the authority? I've been there three times. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land, the Jews, and the land that ye know not, Babylon, neither nor your fathers. And they shall serve other gods day and night. Babylonian gods. For I will not show you favor. You're getting out of the land. You're not, that land that God says is your land. Not America. Right. This is my land. This is your land. You don't realize you're stealing that from Israel? Because there's only one body of land that's been given by God to one group of people, and it's not Americans. It's a land called Israel that America mistakenly calls Palestine, and it belongs to the Jews. Tell Hamas to get out. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north, as are Nehemiah coming out of Babylon, and all the other lands, whether he has driven them, I will bring them again into their land that I have given their fathers. All right, so out of the land of Israel from the land of the north, that's Babylon. 
That's a prophecy. So when you think God's all finished with the Jews, he's not been Look, and from all the lands, whether I've driven them. That's second advent. That's America. That's England. That's wherever the Jews are. God's going to bring them out of that lands and bring them back into their land. You ready? Look at 1616. And I want you to read 1616. I want you to think of a Bible verse. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And they shall fish them. Can you think of a, a, a Bible verse? Written to Jews, spoken to Jews, not the church. Peter, Andrew, follow me and be fishers of men. Jeremiah 16, 16. That's not Gentiles. It's not the going out into the Gentile world. That comes from Jeremiah 16, 16. And all through Matthew, Jesus said, don't go to the Gentiles, go to the, go to the Gentiles, a half-read Jew Gentile, he said, listen, I'm, I'm here for the children. Now you can spiritualize, be fishers of men, but when you're carnal and teaching wrong doctrines, you actually believe that verse is for you, and you're not spiritualizing it. You can spiritualize, you can spiritualize. There's a difference between spiritualizing and believing that when Jesus called Peter and Andrew, come on, let's go get some Jews. Matthew, uh, Jeremiah 16, 16. As a church, all right, be ye fishers of men. We're going to go out, we're going to witness, and we're going to bring them the gospel of Jesus. It, it can't be the Gentile because there was no gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ when Jesus said, be ye fishers of men. He's going out preaching the kingdom. Oh, 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 look at verse 15. You see the land bring you into your land? I will send for many fishers. It's all Jewish flavor. And I will send for many hunters. And they shall hunt him from every mountain, from every hill, and out of the holes of the rock. I'm not surprised I've never heard hunters use that verse. For my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. Neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. I can see what they're doing. I can see what you're doing. And at first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. That's in the law. Deuteronomy says seven times for their sin. Seven times for their sins. Seven times for their That's the law. God said for the Christian, he he'll chasten you. Or he just may kill you. Or he'll make you keep living and do well in this earth. And when you get to judge and see the Christ, you become a failure. You know, there's no church trouble promised. But there's a Jacob trouble because they have defiled my land. Land, 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 land. That's Jewish. They have filled my inheritance, the land. With the caucuses of detestable and abominable things. We read earlier they were eating swine's flesh. They were eating mice. They're sacrificing the sick in the lane. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles, oh, 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 there, shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and thee, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make unto himself, and they are no gods? Okay. 
Can a man make a God that's no God? Yes. America is a God. Donald Trump is a God. Sports figures are a God. Movies. Actors and actresses are gods. People themselves are gods. Cars are gods. Therefore, behold, I will this once. Cause them to know who? The Gentiles. I will cause them to know my hand and my might. They shall know that my name is the Lord. All right, Gentiles, you sit back and watch. You watch what I do to my people. Why? Because if God does it to his people, what's he going to do to the Gentiles? You know, today, the church age, and it's possible, we, we've been to a, a big name bookstore. My daughter and I, you know, my, my old my old Bible got too pathetic. I had to get a new Bible. You know, there was many opportunities to get a King James Bible. And I went to that store two or three times. And I found people in that aisle of the Bible. You can go online, King James Bible. Today, April, April, June 16, 2021. Why is it April? No one with a computer access or a cell phone or a smartphone is without excuse because they can get a King James Bible. You can get a paper copy, you can get an electronic copy. Gentiles and, and Jewish people, non-saved, you have access to a King James Bible. You're going to pay dearly for not getting that King James Bible. But first, but first, but first, what do you think God's going to do to the Christians that don't have a King James Bible? What do you think God's going to do to the Christians that have a modern Bible? Now you Gentiles watch. You Jewish people watch. You watch what I do to my brethren, my Christians. When they don't do what they're supposed to do. And how they handle the Word of God. Or, shall I say, don't handle the Word of God. Or misuse the Word of God. Now, you watch what I do. Because then it's going to, you're going to be next. And does not the scripture say to a point, I may not be quoting this correctly, shall not the judgment begin at the house of God first? What we learn from Jeremiah is God is dealing with the Judah. God is dealing with Israel. God is dealing with, he says, as far as, as, far as his people we read today, I'm taking my loving kindness away. You know, God is love, and God hates to sin and loves the sinner. Yeah, you wait, you wait to God. Then imagine those who don't have the love of God. And they won't be able to say, well, you know, you're, you're mistreating us fair. Uh, you should see what I did with my brother. And you imagine calling up a, a group of group of Christians at the at 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 the, at the person's great white throne judgment. I mean, the, the Christian at the great white judgment. Calls them, okay, sh show them, show the show, show those that are going to go into Lake of Fire. Show them. What do you want us to show? Show them your bald head. That you didn't get no crowns. You didn't get no rewards because you didn't do nothing. Show them. And because they didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they get nothing. Now tell me I am unrighteous, God. Now if I didn't give my, my brethren nothing, what do you expect me to give you? These brethren are going to walk in New Jerusalem with no rewards and no crowns. What about you? 
tell me I'm unequal. God is fair in everything he does. God's holy and he's righteous. 